Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to give you a super quick tutorial on how to blur stuff and use the distorter node inside of Redshift to make things blur. Basically, instead of taking it outside of Photoshop or something and add some blur, you can do that and then use it procedurally to mix in with other things. Very easy to control with just a simple slider as well. So super nice. We can just come in here and blur it without the camera, just actually blurring it inside the texture. And we just crank up that slider and this will just blur for us automatically. See? There we go. Nice and blurry. And it doesn't matter whether it's a texture or a procedural thing. It's just going to blur for us. No problem. We can plug in a texture there. And bingo bongo. We've got it. And then we can unblur it just like that. So pretty cool. So let's take a look at how to set this up. So it's very, very easy. Inside of the material, all you're going to need is the distorter node. So you're going to hit C, type in distorter, grab that. And instead of that, you just want to make sure you choose the type as flow field. And then all you're going to need to mess with is this amount. That's the cool part. So here's the secret to it. Whatever you want to blur, be it a texture or a procedural thing like a tile or a texture map or whatever you want to do, uh, you can do that. And that goes into the texture plugin right there while the noise is the key to this whole thing working. So the way this works is basically if you come in here to our distorter and we crank this up to like 0.5. So we don't want to go crazy, but there we go. And you can see it's this really nice soft blur that kind of looks like a bokeh blur, right? Uh, like a Gaussian blur. And the key to this is to use something like FBM with the very high octaves. And then on top of that, the actual real reason it works is because we changed the scale down super duper low. So if we leave this like 100, the whole thing is just like crazy. Like actually doesn't even really blur that much where it's just kind of wiggly, right? But if we come in here, we make it like one. Uh, it's going to get like kind of look like it's wet kind of so if you want to add that effect to something that's pretty cool you can make it you know some wear and tear you have a natural looking wibble wobble on stuff and then when you want it to, to be that really nice blur you just make it really small 0 0.001 there you go and that's it that's how you get this really nice soft blur and you can zoom in and it looks really well i've got denoiser on so it's probably going to try to smooth some of it out but if you get in close and you, you need it to be even softer than what it is, all you need to do is rather than go lower than 0 0.001 because it won't let you, you can actually go down into the scale here and go even smaller. So 0 0.01 there, 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Now you can get even smaller. And of course, you can always play with the noise. Uh, if you want to mess with the contrast and stuff, you can, but you really don't need to. Uh, that's probably going to be all you need to do. But there you go. That's pretty much it. So hopefully that's useful. Um, you can do this and you know make your own custom gobos, or you can just take any material, add some weathering to it, whatever. And again, I like the distorter node to make things a little like not so much blurry, but just like interesting looking. Okay, let me give you like a real world example here. Here is just a JPEG of a studio, like a render of a still studio that I have that you'll be able to get on Patreon and Gumroad. I'm working on a collection of these really pretty studios. Of course, the toilet is obviously what will show off. Uh, but basically, you take that into your texture here. And if you have something like a tile here, instead of a noise, and use tile with really small lines, just like some grayscale values here and some really small lines, we should be able to give it like a pixel sorter look and, you know, whatever. But basically, you know, obviously you could find the applications for this. But now you can see we've just given it this really cool, like, blurry style look now to me this is kind of like silly but if you use something like from the uh, asset browser like this fabric material here that you just type in fabric it's this fabric too and you combine that with this line distorter now you have an even more realistic kind of worn fabric you can have like a cross stitch built in and then obviously you could use that with a bump you can use that with a bump throw that in there real quick Grab that, add in a ramp to just adjust the colors of this really super quick. Plug it in right in between there. And then now we can have like, um, let's do, what, like a like a navy? Let's do navy. That. And maybe instead of black, we'll do like a light kind of blue. There we go. And so now we have this like kind of bluish fabric. Obviously, we need to adjust the roughness a smidge and mainly add a little sheen on there. There we go. Yeah, and we could come in here and obviously plug the bump map in. That's always helpful. And set it to negative one there if we want. And now we have this nice kind of bumpy fabric just like that. And you can use displacement if you wanted. Obviously, there you go. But yeah, so there's kind of a, an example. So this would be um, it 
without the cross stitch. We'll just plug it in so you can see before and after. It looks fine, you know, nothing wrong with that. We've got just this normal kind of fabric, but then adding that layer of the noise distortion in just helps kind of blend it in. So it's just some practical uh, applications of that. I don't know if the first one with the toilet was really practical, but there you go. <laughs> Uh, let me know what you would use this for. Uh, basically, the, the software is pretty cool, and hopefully it was useful. Uh, if you like these quick little straight-to-the-point tutorials, let me know. Leave a like and comment and subscribe. And be sure to check out the Patreon to support me. Uh, see you later.